do you film with? Which tripods do you travel with? Do you use a tripod? What do you record your TikToks and Reels on? All those questions and more in this video. I'm gonna go over my camera equipment breakdown including what's worth it what are the price points and I'm gonna show you each of the pieces and how it shoots the pros and cons of each of the pieces I have which camera do I use for what um, I can't put this finger down without oh Last but not least, I'm gonna show you footage examples comparing the different cameras because I found that for me, like I'm such a visual learner. So I feel like having that point of reference and really seeing the camera at work helps a lot. So let's get into it. When I go about looking for my camera equipment, first of all, I start off with what is the final product of what I'm gonna create and kind of like work backwards. What camera do I need? What vibe am I trying to create? What lens do I need? What lighting do I need? Kind of elements like that. Obviously I love looking it up on YouTube because I feel like people do great videos reviewing the product and showing how the product works. But also sometimes what I will do is if I have inspo photos of like a photo quality or a photo style that I absolutely love, I'll take that into a professional camera place like Sammy's and I'll literally, this is how I got my last camera which I'm gonna show you guys. That's how I got it. I went into Sammy's camera and I was like, I love this picture quality. I want to shoot like this. I love how cinematic this looks. I love the color quality, the color grading. And then basically from there, recommended a few cameras and I tried it in store. That also is a good way just to also like get to feel and touch the camera and then feel the weight of the camera too because I feel like personally for me, that plays into a lot because especially when I'm travel, I'm really not trying to lug around like a massive, massive camera. So with that, let's dive into my first camera. Okay, so this is the first camera here. This is the Canon EOS RP and this is definitely my heavy duty camera. As you can tell, it's quite massive. The girl's got body. This is a lens attachment and I use this camera the most when I shoot campaigns and jobs when I'm really trying to get more of the high quality cinematic photos like the turnaround for campaigns. So I'll show you guys a few examples of the imagery here. I love a Canon as opposed to a Sony for taking photos because I really like the way that the color grading is because sometimes at Sony's my, I think cause I have like more of an olive tone skin and I feel like sometimes it could come out really, really orange in photos, but this is beautiful across the skin tone, scenery. The quality of this is incredible. I really feel like also a game changer here is the lens. So I got the EOS RP. I used to have a different camera because although it looks massive, the body is actually smaller than other models. So I was like, great, I could use this when I travel. So yes, I used to pack this big lens with me when I travel. But this lens, I feel like makes a really big difference because it really gets those really, really creamy in-depth photos. So we are going to dive into the pros of the camera. It really shoots really beautiful cinematic photos. I feel like the color grading is really, really beautiful and it works really well on auto. So if you are kind of new to the camera game and you're like, I don't know all the terminology with like, with f-stop, iOS, because on manual you can control your lighting, etc. But sometimes I feel like if you're like, you know what, I don't know a lot, let me just dive right into it. It shoots really beautifully on auto too, so that's really great. So the lens opens out like this, and then if you ever want to shoot yourself, it's nice because this also, the screen rotates out. Other pros and features that I like about this it is that it is a touch screen. There is no card in here at the moment, but it is touch screen. So when you're shooting, you can do a manual autofocus just by tapping here. So I feel like that makes it really easy when you're shooting photos. And also it does shoot in 4K really beautifully. I definitely have shot in this and it takes really great low light photos, but it's not very good at catching low light video. For this camera, I mostly use it for shooting photos. I don't really shoot any video on it because it doesn't have good light adjustment because I feel like with some vlog cameras they adjust light really really fast which is what we want because we're changing scenes pretty quickly the light adjusts really slow for this for video it also it makes like a sound when it's tracking objects so you couldn't do like an ASMR you would have to entirely take the sound out when you edit your videos and also another thing is there is no built-in flash here, so you do have to get a flash attachment, which I do have. For my supplemental equipment that I do have for some cameras, but yeah, this one does not have a built-in flash, which I feel like nowadays, especially when you travel, you kind of want your camera 
to be a trifecta and be able to do the most. The camera that I am recording this video on now, I feel like it is my go-to camera so we will get to it. I do my photos video, that's it, photo and video on it, but there's also built-in flash. More con for this one is I feel like it is really heavy. Obviously, I have a strap for it and TBH when we travel, Kellen is holding the camera, but if you're out all day, it gets really heavy. So if I'm shooting local and just shooting a couple outfits, then this camera is my go-to. I'll just put it in my bag. When I travel, it gets really heavy. As you can tell, it is a fairly large camera. Yes, I know this lens looks pretty big and it is pretty big. I feel like it is quite hefty. This is the Sigma 24mm lens and it is a 1.4 so it has really really good you know that like bokeh effect where it really has that depth of field and it makes the photos look really really creamy and cinematic and i feel like this is where that really lens comes into play so this is a wide angle lens which is what i usually like to shoot on because i feel like it's much easier especially when I travel or get alpha photos, but since it is a wide angle lens, you do have to get quite close. Wide angle lenses are usually good for getting like landscape architecture, things that have more of a grander scenic frame. But I honestly just shoot my outfits on it. If you get really close to, I feel like even though that's a shallow depth of field, its photos are really, really beautiful too. So even though it's a wide angle lens, I feel like this is really versatile. And I also have a different lens too that's more of a tighter angle, but I just prefer this one. I feel like it's just easier to use and the photo quality is great. And I actually really like Sigma lenses. And also, this looks even bigger than it needs to be because since this is a Sigma lens and this is a Canon body, I had to get an adapter. So this middle portion is an adapter what connects connects the two. Honestly, I feel like I don't know a lot of the technicality behind these. I'm telling you guys purely from the way it shoots and from the usage standpoint and the user experience. So that's really what I'm more speaking to. And obviously I have all the specs down here because I do feel like it is still important to know, especially if you guys understand that language. And then next we have this very cute, compact camera. This is an Inception. So this is a Sony ZV-1 and it shoots in 4K. It shoots beautiful, beautiful footage. More times than not, for my vlogs, I am using this camera because it is so compact, easy to use. It fits in on my purses, which is really important because I feel like now purses are getting tinier and tinier. So this fits amazing. It shoots beautiful quality. Also, I miss places. I know it's somewhere, but it also comes with a little mic diffuser, like that little fluff. Here's a big version of it, but... And there's also a white model of this that I used to have but unfortunately it broke and now I got a black one, but it does come in two colorways. So I love this camera because it has a really great stability, coloring, depth, and what I love is it also it adjusts really, really quick to lighting and coloring. I think this is literally called vlogger camera. It is literally made for vlogging for the digital age. So if you're looking for a vlogging camera, I would honestly say this would be my recommendation. Like if you were just starting out looking for kind of the one camera that can do it all when it comes to vlogging and recording videos, I would say this is the one. I also love it too because you can also see yourself. You can flip the screen and watch yourself too. I also love that this one has the zoom in and out feature. I love doing that, if you guys can tell in my videos. And I feel like that also achieves kind of like the old school film effect if you zoom like really, really close in macro. The video quality is amazing. And you can also take photos on it too. And another great thing is this has image stabilization. So like, you know when you're walking and recording footage, I feel like it still keeps the footage really steady and easy to watch. And as thing called space priority, so it'll basically track your face and remember in the past when you see like people do beauty videos like they would always like go like this and hold up their product because that's what i need to do in order to focus but this just auto focuses so if you just are recording something and you stick it right up it'll blur everything in the background and focus on what is at the focal point so this is really easy to use it's really easy to use on the go i've used this for my travel vlogs for recording my beauty tutorial so i really feel like this is a very versatile camera 
Even though I was talking to Sean Sony earlier saying that I don't like the skin tone reproduction on it, this camera actually captures it beautifully. But again, this is for a video. I just don't like how other Sony cameras shoot photos with the skin, but this one shoots it really, really beautifully. So the pros of this camera, it comes with a little mic diffuser. It's very portable, compact, beautiful 4K video quality with focus, quick light and color transition and formatting. It has a zoom in and out feature, shoots well in bright light as well as low light, and then shoots well on auto. I would say the one downfall with this, which is I think it's my fault, but this lens right here, I feel like it's really sensitive as you can see with different cameras, they have this massive lens cap on it so it protects your lens. But with this one, there is no lens protector so it's, it's quite, it's just this. So I can really go ahead and just open that like that. And sometimes I'll kind of just like throw this into my purse without having a case for it. So I would say if you are gonna use this camera, I definitely recommend getting like a hard case or some sort of case where this is not gonna be messed with because once this is messed up, your camera is just out the window. Like my previous cameras have broken where this is kind of like a little bit ajar and it's just kept fucking with the camera. So I would say, Keep that in mind. It is kind of sensitive, like, again, my fault. But sometimes, you know, like, I'm, I'm vlogging on the go and I'll kind of, like, set my camera in random places and there's been multiple times my cameras ate it and just fell flat on its face and then it broke. So I feel like it's sensitive in that sense. So I would say be mindful of this where the lens opens and just make sure to have a case for it. That's where my little fluffy thing is right now, but I can't find the case. One of the questions that I get the most on my Instagram or TikTok is just how are my reels and TikTok so clear? People are like, what do you shoot on? And this is what I shoot on, which is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Like this is literally what I shoot on, but my trick is instead of shooting with the front facing camera, which unfortunately you can't see yourself, I shoot with the back camera. So if you shoot on this with your iPhone, the quality is so beautiful and it's so crisp. Like they have really, really, really mastered the camera on these iPhones. And I feel like whenever a new model comes out, if there's like a little upgrade on camera and video quality, then I will get it because I'm in the business of content creation. So I do feel like I need to have the best equipment. It is an investment that is absolutely worth it. It's got the max because I'm constantly editing on my phone and so much of my life happens on my phone. So, and I literally just got this thing, which is a pop socket because I don't know about you, but how I use my iPhone is just with one hand like this. So my pinky finger was just like always supporting it and it started to get strained. Like I started to get literally like little aches here. So I just got this pop socket, which honestly helps a lot. And I feel like nowadays, even if you're not in content creation, we're on our phones so much. So I would definitely recommend this little pop socket action so the quality on this iphone 12 max pro is is absolutely insane the quality is so crisp especially if you pair it with the right kind of lighting if you adjust the lighting in the camera app just like while you're taking your photos and then also my tip too is also just using the camera app that is on the iphone and then importing the videos into TikTok and Reels. That is really how you get the maximum quality on it. So my next video will be my tips and tricks for how I shoot and showing you exactly how I shoot because I feel like it's so many questions on that. But this is where I shoot all my TikToks and Reels. And it's interesting too, right? I think before everything was like so polished, it was so refined and that was a quality. But now with platforms like TikTok, they just like love the raw and the quick. I just feel like iPhone photos and iPhone videos just perform better. So I'm like, great. The quality is amazing. It is easy, easy to use. So this is just what I've been using. And then for my voiceovers, when I do anything on my phone, I literally talk into it like this. I know, I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion because I know that some people have different mic attachments, which I also have, which I've used, but sometimes I feel like, like when you say like, it just sounds like you're spinning into it or there's like this weird audio effect. So if you just talk directly into this and I am in my office where the doors are closed, I feel like there's a bit of acoustic in here. Make sure there's no other outside noise, but I'll just record voiceovers just on my phone like this on my iPhone. Okay, we're doing a little camera angle swisheroo here. So, so far the footage that you guys have been seeing 
has been on my Fuji X-S10 camera. And then this is the mic setup that I use. Okay, we're doing a little camera angle switcheroo here. So, so far the footage that you guys have been seeing has been on my Fuji X-S10 camera. And then this is the mic setup that I use. So whenever you hear voiceovers for my videos, this is a mic that I use. I really like how compact it is and the quality is really, really crisp and clean. I mean, you just basically plug it into the side of the camera right here and then voila, we are in. Kellen also has given me like a really legit mic that he used to use for podcasting, but I just feel like this is easier because it's literally this one attachment here and you just apply it, not apply it. <laughs> this is a makeup tutorial. You just pop it right onto your camera there. And now we're gonna flip this out and I'm gonna swap my Sony ZV-1 camera with this Fuji X-S10 so I can show you guys the difference in quality and just show you guys how this camera works. Okay, and I am reporting from my Fujifilm camera. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see the difference in quality. Now I'm recording on the Sony ZV-1. I've taken off my Fuji from the tripod so I can show you guys how it works. So with the mic, I just attach it here, just slide it right off. It is so lightweight, like I really love this one. And sometimes with voiceovers, I will just talk into it like this. So this is my Fujifilm X S10. And I feel like this is my do-it-all camera right now when it comes to taking photo and video because I get both types of content. And this one I did a bit of research on before I bought, but I absolutely love it. So for photo quality, it takes really great photos. Obviously, it doesn't have the depth of field and really that creamy cinematic field that the Canon has because this is a behemoth of a camera. I think it shoots quite differently, but this one still shoots very beautiful photos. I'll show you guys the difference. I'll show you examples of how this one shoots. But what I love about this camera too is also it has a built-in flash. So I love shooting with flash. Even in daytime, I'll shoot a flash. Even for nighttime photography, I love it. There's this button right here and you basically pop it up and the flash comes. So I really like that there's a built-in flash for this one. The flash shoots really wonderfully, but it's a really, really tiny lens, which makes it perfect for travel. So I was looking for a camera that I can travel with that really does it all. And this camera actually fits in my purses, which is, it has to check that box off for me because I don't want to hold extra things on a, when I travel, but still want to get really beautiful content. So this one I feel like was a game changer for me because now I'm like, great, I just need one camera and I'm good because this takes photos, but I can also vlog on it. I can switch back and forth in gears. And this also shoots really well on auto. It does have a manual function. Sometimes I'll shoot manual if the light is being tricky, but auto works beautifully. And then it has video option as well. And it shoots video so beautifully. I really, really love the duality of this camera because for me, I'm like the fact that it has flash, it can shoot beautiful photos and I can vlog on it is freaking amazing. So the lens attachment that I have here does play a big role in this. It is a wide angle camera. So even when I'm shooting myself, I don't really need a tripod. I can just stick my arm out like this. Pretty good wide frame because of the wide angle. And what I really love about this camera too is you can zoom in and out with this, which I feel like that is not that common. So let me just, I will just use me as an example here. So just by rotating this lens, I can zoom in and out and like, see how close it is to my face right now. It still even has a little bit of good negative space around me and it just really just zooms all the way in. And it's really compact. So let me show you, it fits in my purse. And then it also zips up, which I don't know about you, but that is like a really impressive big element, especially like for fellow influencers and content creators, like when you go to events, I don't know what I'm holding my camera. I wanna make sure that I can put it away and then tuck it out when I need. So this, either this is like a Mary Poppins bag or this is just the perfect size. Moving on to the cons of this camera, for video, the lighting adjusts really slow. So if I'm shooting this per this angle now, this perspective, and I switch over, it, it takes a while for the lighting and the coloring to catch up. So you kind of have to be patient. You can't be shooting this and just moving really, really rapidly. I feel like there is a little bit of a delay time with that. It doesn't shoot very well in low light because with the Sony, I feel like it adjusts really, really quickly. If there's low light, 
it will kind of compensate for it and make it brighter but with this one for the lighting it doesn't really do that if it's dark the camera is also dark no i keep swapping back and forth between cameras i'm curious to see if you guys can see the difference in quality but i'm basically setting it up in the same exact spot we're back in the fujifilm xs10 and as you can see this just has a wider frame and this one has the zoom functionality and it's just right in the front on the lens it is really tight and you can see the quality is really incredible it gets get really tight out um okay i feel like i just lost my train of thought doing that okay so i got a question as to what lighting equipment i use and you know i've really tried it all i've tried like the ring lights the vanities with the with the lights and just so many things and like phone light attachments and for some reason I just don't really like the way my skin and my texture looks, so I just use natural light. So that is how I shoot. I try not to shoot content um, once I lose light. If I do, then I will shoot with the flash on, and that is usually how I get content. As far as lighting goes, I just shoot in natural light and always facing the light source, not away. And I really feel like film is having a moment right now. It has returned, but I'm very happy about it because I love having digital prints and physical prints of photos just for like memories. And I feel like it just feels more special taking photos on film and I get all the questions about which film cameras I use. So I actually use two different kinds. So this one, I really had to scour online. I feel like you can't find you cannot find or at least i couldn't find any new ones and i got this one on ebay and it was sent from japan and this is a contacts t2 the photo quality is so beautiful and this is very very compact and it's actually quite easy to use it has autofocus it has flash and so it's not like some of the older film cameras where you do have to manually adjust this is really standard and straightforward and the photo quality just is exceptional i love it so much but if you do not want to invest in this camera because i think i spent I'm gonna say it was either over 500 or 700. I was kind of surprised at how much it was. Let me double check for you. Cause I don't wanna be out here spreading rumors. If not, I feel like this is the next best thing, which is the Fuji disposable, Fuji film disposable camera. I've tried a few disposable film cameras and I feel like I like the qu photo quality of this one the best. It gets photos really beautifully, grainy. It had, kind of has you know, like that warmth and that nostalgic feeling. I'll show you guys examples of how it shoots, but this is one that I use. It's Willow. She's scratching herself. This is the one that I use quite a bit. I literally just get it on Amazon. They sell it in multi-packs. So these are the two film cameras that I use. I feel like if you want to invest and have one for the long run, and I guess this is also more sustainable because you're just swapping out film, not buying new bodies every single time. So the Contacts T2, I love. And then just the disposable Fiji film. It's very easy to use. Even just like for flash, you would just lift that up. And that's it. Very, very compact. And it just keeps going. So beyond my camera attachments, I also have different lens attachments for my iPhone. And this brand, Zenvo, I've been through multiple brands on Amazon. I feel like this is all just out of trial and error and experimenting which ones I like. And this brand has very good quality, stable lenses. So I have these two right here. One is a wide angle lens. And then this other one is a macro lens. So sometimes if I'm just shooting on my iPhone, which is really interesting now because some brands will ask for iPhone content or if some people just prefer to just shoot on iPhone and they don't own any cameras. I feel like these are actually good buys to invest in they're honestly not even that much but the photo quality is really good and it's really crisp and it just has this clip so this one is the macro and it basically works on this bottom lens so it simply attaches like that and then you can shoot macro on your phone and i'm telling you this is really crispy when i like to use this is when i'm showing close-up product shots of let's say like a face oil or i'm trying to show the texture of something i feel like this is really brilliant for it it is super macro though so you have to get really close this tatcha gold spun lip balm but obviously like this because they're not close enough but once you get really tight it gets like incredible incredible detail and just like see how crisp that is i really feel like that is almost camera quality so i love using these for just macro shots 
let's see. Yeah, at that point it doesn't work. But once you get really close, it's really crisp. Put this attachment, it just screws right, right on. It also comes with a lens cap, which I feel like that's official, okay? Hi, it's me. And then after you put the lens, if you are filming yourself or you want to get a wider angle of whatever you're shooting, these lens attachments are really freaking brilliant and I've tried a lot. I'm not sure if this brand makes fisheye lenses, but as far as a super wide angle lens and a macro lens, this one's brilliant. And it just comes with this nifty little travel pouch. So it's just secured and back in and it's just so small. So we're getting into tripods. Tripods are everything. This is so important, especially if you are either shooting yourself or filming yourself. And I feel like with vlogs, we mostly are filming ourselves. So tripods are a big game changer. So this one is the Manfrotto one. I feel like a lot of people have this one. It is compact enough just to fit in our bags and it's quite stable. Kind of goes out like this, this is the furthest point, and then you can stand it up a little bit too. For heavier cameras though, it can't really support it, but as far as my Fuji film and my Sony vlogging camera, it's really great. It just winds on the bottom. And this basically doubles as a table tripod. As you can see, it is quite low. You just click this and it just rotates 360. This is the furthest point, it rotates. When you are vlogging, when you want to be a little more wide angle, I just do that and then hold it like this when I vlog. I feel like this one is a really reliable one. It is a good table tripod. It is a good mid-size one that I usually use at home. And then when I go out, I mean, I feel like I have different things for just when I'm out of the house. Again, I just want to keep it lightweight, compact as possible. And this one is super tiny, <laughs> very cute, very tiny tripod. Um, Kellen was actually the one that got this for me because he stumbled on it. Cause I was like, what is just the smallest tripod I can possibly get? So as you can see, so this one stands and it's really short. So, I mean, I feel like sometimes if you're trying to use it for tripod purposes, you do kind of have to put it on a higher level, but it's still just the same functionality. You click right here and then that angles it. So this just angles back and forth. It's not 360. Another cool feature of this one too is actually you can connect your camera I'll get in on the side right here and then start shooting and hit record here. So when you're vlogging, you wouldn't have to reach and find your red button, which is up here. So you simply just with this, you can hit record or you can also take a photo. So this is actually a wireless shooting grip, but I just double it as a tripod if need be. And this also has Bluetooth connectivity, but I just use this to plug it in on the side. This is probably the one that I use the most at home. And this is a Joby Gorilla Pod. So it has these three legs and it's flexible. It's great for like uneven surfaces because all these legs are adjustable. So let me just show you guys a little demo. All these legs are bendable. So if need be, you can kind of wrap it around objects and it just drops to different levels. Let's say like you guys see this is two different levels right here. So if I want to put it here and still balance it out, it still works because these legs are super flexible. So this is definitely one of my favorite ones. I feel like from a size wise, it is much bigger than the other ones, but I feel like it has the most versatility and it's really, really lightweight. So if you guys take a look at this head too, it has 360, so it could rotate all the way. So if you also need to shoot something overhead, you can shoot right flat right here too. So I feel like this one is honestly the most versatile one, just from a purely size perspective. So this is how small that other hand grip one was, and then this is the length of the Gorilla tripod. So the past three tripods that I just showed you guys are the three tripods that I use for my cameras because they just screw right onto the camera head. But also, also, I love this attachment. And basically this screws on the bottom of any of these tripods as well. This attachment that just screws on just like a camera would. You can either put 
a camera on it although it's quite shallow so i wouldn't recommend putting a heavy camera on it i do put my sony zv1 on just because the depth of it is compatible with this so i'll kind of put it on this attachment is a big game changer <laughs> she loves that word but it really is because i feel like this adapts it to either your vlogging camera or your phone so usually how i will mount it is put my phone like this and then mount the tripod on like that. Okay, we're gonna switch up the angle here really quick because I wanna show you guys this tripod that I use. And this one is a little bit bigger as you can see, but this one is the one I use by far the most because the height extends out a lot. It's actually really lightweight. So whenever like I go, you know, film myself, doing outfit videos or like even out in public like i am the person with this tripod out in public because i'm like i have to get content and even when i play tennis i will use this one i'll just mount this on here and then just alternate back and forth just by rotating this head here and it just gets really effing tall i'll put my iphone on it Ta-da! this is how i shoot a lot of my tiktoks and reels this tripod is literally the best and then this attachment you do need though and even though it looks big honestly it fits in a lot of my bags which is as you can tell a constant criteria for me it just like has to make sense from a lifestyle perspective and ease of use so that's it so this is my cute little ame tennis bag when i play tennis and this honestly just fits right in This went through so much information. I try to keep it just informative as possible and as digestible as possible. Not only talk about tech and specs because I feel like I don't really understand that language. So I also asked you guys on Instagram just what other questions you guys had. So I'm just gonna go through and answer them now. And if I missed anything, if you have any further questions, you know you can ask me in the comments below so with that let's just dive into some of these questions my video i actually answered a few of these questions i'm kind of doing like a quick lightning round so someone said do you use a iphone tripod yes i do this is the one that i use this is my tried and true one so i feel like this is a really great question that i'd highlighted someone said what is a beginner setup for an influencer what is affordable and simple so of course even though if you're like a beginner content creator i feel like it depends on what platform you're creating on and what budget you're working with. So if you are creating YouTube content, I would definitely say this Sony ZV-1 is so versatile. I feel like it does everything you need it to do as far as vlogging goes. You're vlogging at home, you're vlogging outdoors, and it has built-in stability. So I would say this one would be the one I would highly recommend, and then also the Gorilla Tripod. I would say those two is my beginning vlogger kit. And then this is my beginner Instagram kit. Again, it just depends on what style you're going for. I feel like some people are die hard, like they love using their iPhone and shoot everything on their iPhone. And I'm surprised how beautiful the photos are. I would say for one, the iPhone is amazing. I would say if you can, you know, just the latest model because their camera quality gets upgraded with each one. Also their storage space. The iPhone 12 Pro Max and the camera quality is really amazing. I edit on the phone, I edit in app on the on the camera app. So this tripod, I cannot talk about this enough. I know it looks kind of big, but it is so lightweight and it is so versatile that it can literally go on various levels. Like I use this for my fashion videos, my beauty videos, my travel. Yeah, I literally take this out in public. So I would say this tripod paired with this attachment is incredible for Instagram and for reels. I feel like as far as photos go, I feel like definitely where the price jumps up would be the camera and the equipment because not only do we have the body, but also the lens, lens attachments. So you were just beginning. I think you are fine, honestly, with the iPhone. It shoots really beautifully. I feel like if you wanna take it up a notch and invest in a camera, like the GS, X S110, it's always like a tongue twister. For the beginner TikTok kit, I feel like it is pretty similar to the Instagram one. And then again, just same with these lens attachments because I think you get a little more variation and the quality of this is pretty high level. Wow, I feel like we just went over 
so much information and so much equipment but i really hope that this helped you guys out just because i feel like i've gotten a lot of questions about it and especially for me i'm so curious i think when i see someone's video i'm like what camera is that that looks so beautiful what is she using so i'm really happy i'm really glad that i got to share this information with you guys just because me too i'm also very curious so my next follow-up video is going to be how i edit my photos and videos for YouTube, Instagram, slash TikTok, and then what apps are the best editing apps on our phone, what to ditch and what to keep, because I feel like shooting photos and videos, but the post-production is really like post-production, is where really you add in the different vibes and the mood, and I feel like that's where a lot of the personality comes in, so that'll be my next video. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.